Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God has sent his lion, his angels, and has shut the lion's mouth, that they have not hurt me. For as much before him, innocence he was found in me. And also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Then the king, there was the king exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no manner of hurt was found in him because he had believed in his God. Hebrews eleven thirty three. Hebrews is very close to Deuteronomy. If you look for it from there before Friday next week, you will see it. Hebrews eleven thirty three. Who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped. That's what I'm sharing on. Stopping the mouth of lions. Tell five people, stopping the mouth of lions. Life does not give you what you deserve. Life gives you what you demand. In life, there are things you qualify for that may not come until you place a demand for it. Everyone has equal opportunity, but only demand makes certain people stand out. You will keep seeing opportunities come your way through life, but your ability to place demand on those opportunities is what helps you to stand out in life. I want to say this to you. As you move in the journey of life, there are battles you will see. It is not a prophecy of doom. It's a reality of life. Are you listening to what I'm saying? It's not a bad prophecy. It's a reality. As you journey through life, there will be attacks. There will be confrontations. There will be battles. If I don't tell you this, I'm not telling you the truth. I, I, I mean, years back, I knew a song that was sung. Uh, good thing Jesus done for me. He butter my bread. He sugar my tea. When I hear such song, I say, come on, let's tell ourselves the truth. Once you are a Christian, there are going to be confrontations. The Bible said in Psalm 34 from 19 to 21, many are the afflictions of the righteous. He's righteous, but he has affliction. He's a holy person, but he has affliction. He's a bad. Somebody say bad. He said, Lord, deliver him out of them all. I prophesy upon the first 1,000 persons. No matter the battles you see, no matter the arrows of your life, no matter the hardship you encounter, by your adults, I decree you are coming out of it. I say you are coming out of trouble. You are coming out of failure. Your story is about to change. My God, I say your story will change today. Your story is about to change. I prophesy that the power of the Holy Ghost, something great will happen in your life. It will happen in your family. It will happen in your finances. It will happen in your office. It will happen in your career. You don't serve a devil. You serve a mighty God. He's the same yesterday. He's the same today. He's the same forever. When God says yes, no man can say no. When God lifts you up, no man can bring you down. God is on your side. Power is on your side. Lord is on your side. Lift the one shot fire. Shot fire. Shot fire. Shot fire. Shot fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. He shut the mouth that he closed the mouth. He said he shut it. He didn't close it. He shut it. Took the key. What did God do? God changed the appetite of the lion. 
They saw flesh, but they were not interested. To shut the mouth of the lion means the Bible actually used the word stop the mouth of the lions. To stop the mouth of a lion means to be in the midst of confrontation and yet you act nothing. To stop the mouth of a lion is to dare what dare others. Am I speaking here? One time we're coming from New York and we're on the plane and all of a sudden the, the, the wind was massive. That's why I saw most top Nigerian musicians who I saw with all kinds of dreads and earrings calling the blood of Jesus. Actually, I saw an American musician. She said, she's from Jamaica. She's my daughter. And she said, hey, I said, I thought you were, you were secular. I said, no, leave that secular thing. This is dead. And I said, well, it can't happen here. No, it can't happen here. Yeah, if, they, if there is a candidate or there are candidates in a place that have been marked to die, you step in there, you change the story. Am I speaking to somebody? To stop the mouth of the lions means to die. What others fear is to be in the midst. Do you know in this country there is massive poverty and struggle? If you're in politics, no apologies. It's everywhere. The government of the day has not done better. I have children who are governors, and I, I have no apology for this. That's why I'm not I'm not I'm not friendly with the system. In those days, they're still in billions, but now they're still in trillions. There is massive poverty everywhere. Trillions. Someone called me and said he bought an aircraft that should come and see and dedicate. I said, I'm not coming. I know your words. I know your value. What did you, what did you do to buy an aircraft? At the expense of the common man. He said, no, it's national cake. I said, who baked it? Somebody has to say the truth. Listen, when I talk like this, I'm not being arrogant. With all due respect, I have seen everything. There's nothing I've not seen. Am I talking to somebody? There's nothing. I've seen poverty, very poor. I was so poor that poor people called me a poor man. I've seen prosperity. I've seen fame. I've seen people that matter. At this point, I stand to say the truth. That's all. When this ministry started, there were times when it's time for offering, I'll forget. To say, Papa, they have not taken offering because that's not the essence when we started ministry. But there are people in the midst of poverty, in the midst of why some are stealing, some are still being blessed genuinely. In the midst of the lions, some are still shining, some are stopping the mouth. It doesn't matter the scorching sun of poverty that pierces others in this country. By reason of your being here today, God will open a door and you are going to stand out. You will come out of it. You will come out of that struggle. It will open a door. It will send a helper. A helper will come to your life. And that helper will bring you out. I said that helper will bring you out. That helper will bring you out. Lift your hands and shout hallelujah. What was in the life of Daniel? That Daniel could be in the midst of lions overnight and nothing happened to him. What was special about him? What was special? Don't forget, 1 Kings 13, it was a lion that killed the prophet. You remember? Don't forget, in the book of Second Son, of, 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 of Judges, rather, it was a lion that confronted Samson. Don't forget, when Elisha got angry and somebody looked at him, 42 children, 
they said, Go ahead. He commanded two lions who were also she bears. And they came out of the wood and devoured them. But someone sat in the midst of lions. I'm talking of what makes you stand before robbers fully armed and your hands are in your pocket. Am I talking to someone? Your hands are in your pocket. Why? Because you know that Greta is here. One time when arm robbers, when I encountered arm robbers on the road, they said, Pastor, won't you lie down? Can't you see what you are holding? I said, forget what you are holding. Those things only work on human beings, not spirits. It makes you stand with audacity, capacity, sagacity in the midst of confrontations. While others are drowning, where it appears everything is almost finished with them. When their life has become a palace of disease, a schedule of failure, then the value of despondency, then a cataclysm and exasperation. But God is about to send a hand from heaven to pick you out of the mighty clay and set your feet on the rock to stay. There's an open door coming. It will single you out of the crowd, bring you out of the number. What was in the life of Daniel? Number one. Can I go on? This is the hard time. This is the hard time. Number one. Daniel took a stand. He took a stand. He took a stand. What were the qualities that made him stop the lion's mouth? He took a stand. Daniel took a stand. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are with the crowd, you miss the cloud. It doesn't matter where you find yourself, in the office, in the profession, always stand out. If you are with the generality, you can be a general. Stand out. Every great person has few friends. One of the signs of smallness is that everybody is your friend. It's a major, a maximal, a monumental sign of smallness. You relate with everybody? You greet everybody? Your phone is ringing every second. It's not how many calls. It is who called. Of smallness is a, a personality that has everybody, every time they can hire is your friend, everybody you relate with. Daniel took a stand among the crowd. There were a lot of people that were sold into slavery among the Babylonians, but only Daniel Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stood out of the number. And I'm going to tell you why they stood out. Number one, Daniel knew he was a Jew, he knew who he was. There's somebody I know who I am. You are not talking well. See, I know who I am. When you discover identity, you maximize dignity. Now, you see, in life, circumstances and situations will try to give you an identity. They met John the Baptist and they said, Who are you? Are you the prophet? Are you Elijah? Are you Elisha? He said, No, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare. Tell somebody, I know who I am. It's time for you as a believer to know who you are. Your identity. Do you know that every one of them, before they gave them the meal, before they gave them what to eat, they first sacrificed it to idols. I get very angry when I see Christians be compromising so easily. People sell their identity. Am I talking to somebody here? I was, I mean, people sell at the flimsiest of temptation. They sell their identity. I was flying one time with a, with a pastor, a great popular pastor, and we sat in the plane. And the next thing, they asked us, what do you want? They met this guy, what do you want? The guy said, give me red wine. I said, pastor, red wine? He's a man of God, blood tonic, blood tonic, blood tonic. We landed, the first thing. It, we landed, we got abroad. I saw bottles. And he said, I said, Pastor, he said, You know, the blood, you have to intoxicate, you have to charge it. I said, You are a drunkard. You are a drunkard. You are a drunk. Some of you don't know you are a drunkard. You prepare kunu, you prepare no no, and you allow it to ferment for a while. You are a drunkard. You are a drunkard. It ferments for a while, and you go, you must stand out. You know, sometimes when you hear some people talk, even if all of you work in the bank, there is a way you can carry yourself. And when people come to the bank, it is your counter they like to come.
you are you are all lecturers in that in that school but there is a way you can while i was in the university my first degree there were lecturers i liked to sit under when they walk into class you see audacity when they appear you see composure when they speak you see efficacy when they move you see outstanding carriage and when they open their mouth they are talking you you when it's almost time you don't want them to stop and there are some others they walk to class hello student a is for god and the rich b is for everybody c come and see me d you are free to take it f is free when they walk into class everybody's spirits drop because they have nothing to add daniel knew he was different he carried himself with such a mindset number two why daniel stood out daniel knew the deceitfulness of riches daniel was a, he was selected by the king as he was picked by the king he was in the midst of money of plenty ladies and gentlemen i'm sorry i may not sound like other pastors prosperity can destroy a man when you get to a point you have money as you like you have cars as you like you have pro prosperity as you like you you can i mean you have access to anything that is the best time to be tempted am i talking to somebody here am i talking here matthew chapter 13 verse 22 the bible says when he was talking of the parable of the sower he said those that fell among thorns are those who had the word but the deceitfulness of riches choke them you had no money as a lady you were normal now you have money you are fixing plastic nails if you are here with all those funny things you call extra nails after service take them off it's nonsense take them take them there are things that are just nonsense practical actual futile nonsense nonsense on high velocity you had no money you had no money have you discovered that poverty has a way of bringing a man close to god now, i'm not please oh, i'm not an advocate of poverty before you leave church as a papa was emphasizing that we need to be poor but i'm saying draw the balance have you seen men who have billions and billions and they say they keep money aside to fight somebody See, by the time I take you to court and I spend and spend, you will understand. Money has confused him. There are some of you, just one car, one tiny car you have, you have no regard for your biological parents. Your elder brother, you talk to him without respect. Am I talking to somebody here? You talk to him without respect. Because riches deceive. But don't forget, if you think you have so much money, in the book of Exodus, the Bible says, there came a time that money failed. Tell somebody, money fails. Deceitfulness of riches. This one makes a pastor stand and a Yahoo internet fraud star comes to church with a tithe and he collects it. For what? You don't, that is not a tithe, that is robbery. And I've told you that several years. In our church here, in all our branches around the world, Portacot, everywhere. If you are an internet boy or girl and you hit, as they say, you made millions, don't dare bring the tithe to this church. Because if you bring it here, your hands will catch fire on the spot. Am I speaking to somebody here? You dupe somebody and you now buy a bus for church and the man does not hear from God, so he collects. Some man came with a, a tithe of about 16 million and came to me and said, Papa, I want to sow a seed. I said, that's nice. What's that? I said, 16 million. I said, why? Why, why, why? why 16? What did you do? He said, um, my job. I said, yes. Um, clearing, forwarding, general merchandise. I said, what are you clearing? He, began, he started stammering. And my first degree, I did mass communication. I said, journalists, we know how to pick who is lying. Yes, so you're stammering, stammering, stammering. 
I said, you know what? There are many pastors who are so stranded. If you give them this money, they will pray for you. But unfortunately, I am not one. Take the money and go somewhere else. But if I were you, I would stop duping people. Can you see the life you live now since God gave, God gave you prosperity to help you? Now prosperity has now confused you. Your parents at home who are stranded in the village. Your mother is sleeping on mattress and you are going to Dubai for holiday. You are a deceiver. You have people in the village who are stranded. They can't feed. But all you do is to throw money around. Money will soon fail. And those people, you will need them. I told the daughter of mine in this church, she will travel, she goes to London to make her hair. She goes to London. Said, Papa, there's one saloonist in London. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. When she handles your hair, oh my God. So she would travel from here and go to London to make hair. One time the father came to see me looking tattered and scattered, battered, rattered, haggard, bushard. I said, this is your father. I said, yes, I'm, I'm ashamed of you. I took the man in, gave him some money, and I told the lady, bless your father. Hmm, hmm. Me, I can't do. Me, I can't do. He, did, he, did, he didn't take care of me. Me, I can't do. And I said to her, you discovered your destiny because your father abandoned you. Sometimes God uses what your parents do to you to push you to discover your future. She fell sick. They needed blood transfusion. Only the father had the same blood group with her. He said, Papa, they say I need blood. Pray for the blood of Jesus. I said, No, your father. Everybody tried to beg him. The man said, It's not coming. He said, Do I still have a daughter? They said, Yeah. He said, The last time I checked, I don't have. And I called him on phone. I said, I'm the one calling. And the man said, I would not have left this village if I didn't hear your voice. He said, I have suffered. I've been taken to court over a little amount. I hear my daughter throws around. And some people, for, to show how wicked they are, if they want to oppress their parents, they buy things their parents don't need. How can your mother be 85? You are buying a stockfish. Is that not witchcraft? Your father is 90, you buy him an iPad. To do what? To kill himself? Somebody bought a father in the village a Blackberry phone. The father says, is he a remote control? <laughs> she, I don't know this one, no. I don't know this one. <laughs> buy what I can use. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody here? The deceitfulness of riches. When God has blessed you, you must separate the blessing. Don't mind my vocabulary. You must separate the blessing from the blesser and the blessed. The blessing is the material. The blesser. In English, communication is acceptable. Any I twist it so long you understand it, that's communication. Okay. <laughs> the blesser is God. Then the blessed is you. Separate the blessing from what? Blesser and the blessed. So you'll be able to keep your sanity in check because too much money can confuse a man. Too much money can make a person misbehave. I am telling you. There are people now, if they are 50 million, what's 50 million? 10 million, they go crazy. Some will be abnormal. I'm telling you. When they are worshipping God, they will cross their leg. They are remembering their millions. They have a hundred million. The world is in trouble. 
Why do people in politics brag, hit their hand on their chest? Because they rely on their millions. Not knowing you can't buy life. This, this doesn't sound familiar, right? It's not the kind of message you want to hear. Doesn't sound. You, you just, you just, and so what? You bought a wristwatch for 20 million naira, so what? Does it have any function other than what the normal wristwatch says? So what? What does it mean? Your shoe is 2 million. It's still your leg you put inside. You don't put gold there. And there are legs that are even better than that leg you are putting that shoe. Years ago, I was abroad and they told me, I want to buy a shoe. They say it's $17,000. I said, does he use engine? 